We look at the officers who were involved in this incident background. One was a former Department of Corrections. Uh, he worked at the jail. He was accused by an inmate of excessive force. Uh, so there's a lot of questions about the background of these officers, why no one helped, why this was allowed to happen, and also going forward, what's go what we're going to see going into the weekend, Jen. Well, John, we appreciate you taking time to be with us tonight. Obviously, a lot of folks upset by this footage uh, should be out there protesting, but we can only hope uh, that it does remain peaceful this evening. John Huddy, thank you so much for being with us tonight. You bet. Thank you. And I want to... All right, and want to bring in now an incredible journalist who has been expertly uh, following Antifa and BLM riots for the past few years, editor at large for the Post Millennial, Andy No. Andy, welcome. So glad to have you with us tonight uh, as we watch this unfold. We, we've seen the footage now. Um, you've reported that Antifa, BLM, and, and other leftist groups, they're, they're using this incident as an excuse to incite a, a George Floyd style uprising over the death of Tyree Nichols. Talk to us more about what you expect to happen throughout tonight as we see cities across the country, uh, including where I sit in Washington, D.C., bracing uh, for, for a night of, of perhaps violent protests? Well, I think some of the social media calls by these extremist groups has actually revealed their bluff in that for them, it's not about no justice, no peace. It's just about no peace. I mean, look at what happened in this situation. We had a police chief very early on, days before the release of this body camera footage, announcing that the five um, officer suspects were fired um, and that they had all they had been charged with second degree murder among other serious offenses. And this we've been told is, you know, we want police accountability. Well, you got that in this case. And but there's still people taking out on the streets and there's we're still in the early hours, by the way, in the West Coast. Uh, Nighttime hasn't really happened there yet. So um, we have all these groups taking out to the streets. You see in New York so far, there's um, people on bullhorns uh, promising essentially violence in these flyers that are posted uh, on the West Coast from Portland and Seattle for these violent direct actions. Um, it's emblematic of a, th their MO and worldview is really just to, to, to exploit the deaths of black people for to give themselves an excuse to take out to the streets to set fires and to destroy property. And, and we're, we're showing some of the footage there of, of crowds assembling in, in New York City tonight. And I want to show our audience uh, some of the, the online posts that you found. Uh, these are from Antifa leaked accounts uh, talking about their plans tonight. Uh, one individual is saying, I think this is going to be a very long weekend here in this good old expletive country. Uh, evidence has shown the cops are aiming at your eyes in hopes of blinding you F this country. Another one says the cops should fear us. We have been too quiet, too peaceful, too passive. The fires need to burn. And a third person says if the video is as bad as they make it seem, this will ignite a whole new uprising and it should. Andy, are, are you under the impression that this is going to be just tonight? Or are we going to see weeks or even months of this again, like we saw during the summer of 2020? Um, I'm getting the sense that there is still actually quite a bit of riot fatigue in the wider public from 2020. And keep in mind, the riots, for them to be sustained, there has to be a critical mass. We may see that tonight, we may not. But the point is, we can see that there are agitators online. And by the way, if Parler and other conservative social media was blamed for the 6th of January, I wonder why nobody has been pointing the finger at Mastodon, which is where a lot of violent extremist rhetoric and organizing is happening as we speak in anticipation of the release of the, the body camera footage. Now, we're seeing down in Georgia, Governor Kemp calling in the National Guard in preparation for this. I'm curious, with, with some of what you've shared that's been found, these postings, uh, have you found anything on Twitter where you've, you've communicated with Elon Musk? I know you have in the past to take some of these accounts down, get them flagged, uh, so these people can't communicate there. Have you, have you been able to do that in this situation? Well, all, all I can do is tag Twitter support, tag Elon, and I hope that somebody sees, and of course I report sometimes some of these things that I think cross the line until actually where lives may be at risk. Um, but with some of these accounts that have, that were previously suspended, they've created alternative accounts such as Crime Think, there are others. And um, I don't know what's going on with Twitter safety, but you know, they're, um, 
they haven't taken down these accounts that are evading the ban and trying to take advantage of an event that they think that they can use to put out material to incite people to violence. All right, Andy, no, thank you so much uh, for taking time to be with us tonight. Uh, we're going to move along now to our correspondent, Sarah Williamson. She is on the ground in New York City where those protests are happening as well. Sarah, what are you seeing? Well, Jen, it's really hard to, uh, to describe what to make of tonight because this is a protest that was advertised throughout the week and tonight on with this flyer as something that was going to be incredibly violent. The protesters were told to bring knives, to dress in all black, to bring anything that they could really uh, 